might be good to to start off with, just to fill us in on the word king mob and where that where that what the, what the historical connotations are of that of that term. Uh, well, I mean the thing is, um, when that was used, it was just some ad hoc thing, um, and it, and and it wasn't kind of historical like that. Um, it it was purely because um, a pamphlet came out, uh, quite a big thing. Uh, presentation thing in, in Smiths and it was just kind of picked up about uh, King Mob. We are aware that there had been these riots um, and things um, uh, before the French Revolu uh, Re Revolution in London but it was just uh, it was just made up on the spur of the moment and um, and because it was spread on the wall and then ever ever after that people said it was never spread upon the wall King Mob his Majesty King Mob, and so on. But um, I mean, I mean, it was just, it was just decided in ten minutes, um, sitting around. You know? <laughs> I, I mean, there, there, there was nothing so in the Gordon about it. So in the Gordon uh, lines, that's uh, a complete I, myth. That was, uh, uh, well, myth, no, yeah. I, I, I mean, all the details that we kind of came out later um, about. Um, uh, uh, well, at the same time, Christopher Hibbert's book and things like that. It, it was read a lot later, and the idea that um, there was some kind of uh, a profound connection, um, you know, with the emphasis upon uh, romanticism in, in King Mob, that William Blake yeah, was a, he was, uh, uh, joined yeah. in from Soho and, and went to, um, out. Uh, with the crowd in Newgate Prison, and if there'd been CCTV cameras, he would have never come out. Um, you know, he'd have been jailed for the rest of his life, type of thing. But that was, uh, to later date, all that was found out. It was just something that was decided on the on the spur uh, on the on the on the spur of the moment. You know, to riot um, uh, throughout London and the rest of uh, Britain. It was. Uh, just to create mayhem, yeah. That's what it was about. <laughs> but but with the basis behind it of, of a more coherent situationist uh, theory, you know. Because by the time King Mob came out, the kind of um, people like uh, Chris Gray and, and Don Nicholson Smith and so on, they were in the SI, and there wasn't a break at, at that moment. So it was it was just a kind of a an offshoot. Of the SI, you know, there was no, there was no real break. Is that the what, break occurred later because what, of the what year American. What year was King Mob? Um, yeah. Oh well, I mean, it, 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 it uh, um, it's 1967. Um, in um, late 1967, uh, uh, before the events of uh, May uh, 1968, and so yeah, that's how it came about. Yeah. Can I ask you about you, you mentioned romanticism? Can I ask you about your kind of relationship to romanticism? Because I know one of the first things, maybe it was from the King Mob Echo. One of the first things I heard about King Mob was this idea about um, hanging the the peacocks in in Holland Park and blowing up um, waterfalls. But on the other hand, I think you're very very heavily influenced by ram romanticism, so we think romanticism is kind of nostalgia and sentimentality, but actually romanticism is probably one of the key anti-capitalist movements that we've had in the last 200 years, and it seems to be something you talk about quite a lot. Well, uh, I mean, I, I think that uh, uh, we began to see in kind of uh, English romanticism that uh, I think that it was the most... Um, if you want to call it a, a, an artistic movement, but I think it was uh, beginning to question all the canons of art, and that it was the most formally advanced uh, movement in the world at that time. I mean, you, you can read um, works with uh, the introduction to the lyrical ballads, uh, where he's even questioning the existence of poetry, and they uh, had a kind of um, an interest in the kind of the ordinary working person. I mean. Um, Robbie Burns was something of an icon that he could plough a straight pharaoh. I mean, this seemed to matter more than that he, he, he was an incredible poet as well. And we were looking beyond the kind of the purely uh, formal aspects of romant uh, romanticism, the poetry and so on, and seeing in somebody like De Quincey that, um, that uh, he was the originator, really, of the derive that would be... Um, um, Taken up by the, situ the situation is, and, and, uh, and his tremendous influence almost immediately on Paris. Can you just explain to everybody what the, about the reef, like just quickly what that means. Well, 
Well, well, I, I there's kind of movement to uh, urban spaces. I mean, uh, it's been made, I think, into a kind of a, uh, an aesthetic, and it certainly wasn't at the time. I think it was a kind of a, looking for a kind of a sense of a potential insurrection in uh, urban spaces. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, 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 yeah, because King Mob, though, at that time, when it was kind of formed, it was Notting Hill in London, and Notting Hill then was just a completely marginal uh, area <coughs> that um, uh, uh, if you were straight you, you couldn't go into it. It was uh, um, very much like uh, Stokescroft I guess um, in, 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 um, and, and we're aware of other areas in Britain yeah, um, like in Wally Range in Manchester and um, um, uh, Moss Side and also Heath in, um, in, in, in Birmingham and, you know, we'd look at these kind of uh, places because, but but you were you began to live in you were living in them, and it was all all the overlap, and and the fact that there was um, over 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 overlaps of um, uh, people who were different, and, and all the racial um, uh, over uh, enmeshing with it. Um, <coughs> Places that had become beyond racism and, and, and so on, and, and, and it was just a rich development and all, all, all the time. But it was about um, essentially not looking for kind of interesting walks, but how can you detonate these places, which is why it was called uh, uh, King Mob as well. How can these places explode in a good way yeah. that would lead to a more revolutionary um, conclusion? But it wasn't about aesthetics. No. So you found yourself putting across these ideas just on just before the events of 1968 oh, yeah. kicks oh, yeah. off. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um, so it was absolutely of its moment, and then 1968 happens. And you can you say a little bit more about your experiences in 1968? Um, uh, uh, well, I mean. Um, um, this uh, would become aware uh, then in the, in the kind of um, late 67 of all the developments of the uh, um, international letterists and so on and the, uh, the intervention in Notre Dame um, um, and the great kind of, um, um, you know, and, and the intervention of the Swiss Guards and, and things like that and you're aware of all these kind of um, uh, interventions. But um, the basic thing at, at that point, um, you wanted to kind of detonate things in, in uh, uh, Britain, but there was really a greater interest in what was happening in America mm -hmm. and the riots in America. Um, and the. Um, so you got the Watts riots in uh, uh, Well, uh, uh, and yeah, uh, yeah but, yeah. But, but there was New York, <laughs> uh, 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 New Jersey, 1967, and Detroit. And, and, and these were the things that fascinated us uh, uh, more. And we were hoping that um, you could get similar detonations um, uh, in Britain, more, more than France. This was the, and, and, and of course, I've been to America and um, involvement with uh, Black Mask at, the, at that point. And the overlap um, with the black movement in America, which was through Black Mask as well, because we were, um, uh, you know, getting into areas where the, um, um, there was big uh, uh, meetings of. Um, the black insurgents, and with all the kind of machine guns um, on the rooftops, trained down the, on, the, on the crowds. We were giving out uh, black masks and leaflets and things like that. The cops were kind of um, uh, down on us, and, and, and so on. There was this tremendous interplay and overlap. And I came back to England. I was, I was telling them all of what was taking place in, well, it was in New York, um, in you know, the, the, in London and so on. So it was this, it was the emphasis on, on New York and they're just burning everything to the, all the shit that we hate it, just burning it to the ground. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and things like that. And then we became aware things were beginning to happen in France. The occupation of the universities, which had begun. Um, uh, of course it all got, because they had transferred before, 10 days had shut the university about the Strasbourg uh, uh, scandal in 1966. Just um, that the things were happening in the um, uh, the French uh, in the Par in the in, in Paris mainly in in the universe, and we were fascinated. And then kind of French people coming across and talking about it, and um, 
and, and we were looking at it all the time. This was from kind of December onwards, from 67 to January, February. And it was building and building and building uh, all, all the time. And that's... Um, but we were doing interventions in, in Britain all at the same time as, as what was going on in uh, uh, France. It was in parallel um, and getting, getting into a lot of trouble and, uh, and so on. And then, uh, of course, May 68 erupted and the obvious kind of influence of the situation suddenly splashed across the headlines across, across the world. What sort of age would you have been at this time? Sorry? What sort of age would you have been around this time? 24, 24. 24. Can you say something about those interventions? You said you were engaged in Well, I, I mean, it was, um, uh, you know, kind of disrupting theatre productions, uh, poetry uh, productions, you know, chucking things at poets, um, <laughs> and um, um, uh, artists, uh, picking up on um, uh, people like um, uh, uh, John Layden and having a go. go I mean, people who, who in some ways, John Latham, what he was to do in eco terms in, in Scotland with the Bings, Latham was pretty damn good. Mm -hmm. but, we, but we'd have a go and we'd tear his books off the walls that he'd got stuck up and, and saying, this is all shit, this is, uh, um, it's just playing with the death of art. You've got to, um, the corpse of art, you've got to go beyond this. We're doing this all the time and getting thrown out and the cops call and so on and so yeah, forth all the time. Weeks, what was his name, Robin? Page. Robin Page, yeah. Yeah, he's yeah, happening sort of. Yeah. Disrupting. Yeah, disrupting his happenings yeah. and things like that. That happenings in no way because, I mean, don't forget before that, we'd been kind of in, in Ipterick in Newcastle. We had been praising some kinds of happenings of Jean Jacques Lavelle. And that was our first acquaintance um, <coughs> uh, with a more radical kind of um, uh, art scene. Then uh, we find out that the situation is that I got Jean Jacques Lavelle. Uh, which uh, uh, meeting Don, who was Don Nicholson Smith, and Don was one of the ones who went up four o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning, and knocked on Jean Jacques Lebel's door, and told him there were a lump of he, what he doing was a load of shit. Yeah, he painted it. He painted, hey? he painted his door, didn't he? he painted his door and said what he's doing is a load of shit and things like that. And um, and and um, and we thought, um, oh yeah, yeah, this is the real thing. You know, the transcendence of art into a rejuvenated everyday life, disruption, uh, uh, um, um, not a kind of fluxus thing, because uh, we had been interested in fluxus, fluxus, which was the great kind of happening thing of both Fostel and, well, Jean-Jacques Lebel and people like that. And you had to, you had to kind of negate this, because it was kind of basically still calling it art and go, and go beyond it. This was a, all at the same time as events in um, Paris were all unfolding and unfolding and unfolding until they barricades, yeah. And then we couldn't go to Paris because all of us were um, in trouble with the cops. And um, we had to, um, you know, uh, were locked. You know, you had to sign at the police station every day. You know, so you couldn't exactly go across the channel and come back for the next day type of thing. <coughs> Um, yeah, like that. Yeah. So in terms of, of the 1968, would it be fair to say that a lot of what you did afterwards was kind of a response to the recuperation of 1968 and coming to terms with the kind of the, the disappearance of that radical movement after in, into the early 70s when the kind of counterculture fractured into new ageism and all sorts of other, into the kind of early entrepreneurship that became Thatcherism. There was a lot of different... Uh, paths away from that moment in time, wasn't there? Well, um, I mean, in terms of recuperation, I, I mean that... Um, I, I, I think the kind of, um, you know, the late 60s in this country, it did uh, mark an end of the post-war consensus. Yeah. It was no longer a level playing field. <coughs> and I think that what we find in class mob, that there was a huge king splitting, a uh, uh, king mob, a huge splitting. <coughs> along class lines, wasn't there? The people who didn't have, uh, had come from poor backgrounds, there's no money in their backgrounds and so on. And what we then became aware of was this, um, the unofficial workers' movement in Britain mm -hmm. and uh, began to kind of focus on the potential um, in that, wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah, no, there's a lot of truth in that, yeah. Mm. Uh, but but um, um, we weren't really aware of kind of recuperation until the authentic pump with uh, 
Malcolm McLaren. Yeah, but we're aware of, I was aware of it in um, America. Oh, yeah. Um, um, uh, uh, because it had been much more intense the late 60s in America. And, and you're aware of it um, in things like, um, you know, the up against the wall motherfucker. Um, and the, the reason why Ben and Co. used the term motherfucker was because you couldn't use it. In the, it wasn't used as, uh, in, 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 in the media, in film or anything. I mean, it was, uh, you know, years before they were going to be used, say, in a, a Bruce Willis movie. Something that it was used because it couldn't be mentioned, and um, uh, but then, you know, you suddenly saw the transformation of the kind of um, the sub uh, the subways <coughs> where you get up against the wall carpet diamonds. Just said up against the wall advertising the sale of carpets. That kind of recuperation <laughs> you became instantly aware of um, in um, in, go in going back to uh, to, um, uh, to to America, but. Do, do, do you think there was a, a there's also the, the whole what, what became cultural nationalism is talked about a lot in those terms in the early 70s or so late 60s even where where like revolutionary group sections of the Panthers and other people are talking about the fact that they've got the people who are interested in class war you know outside, not, not just driven by some kind of you know African nationalism necessarily and they say that African nationalism is being recuperated into into bangles and Clothes, and you know, and they talk about recuperation of that as a, a you know, that, that side of the movement was very much open to recuperation in the sense of it being commercialised. Yeah, uh, uh, well, yeah, I mean, you quickly became aware, um, uh, you know, that um, uh, the Black Panthers uh, they were losing it, they'd lost their edge, um, and so on, and this kind of, and then this Cuban. A model that they had, and uh, Maoist, too. and Maoist, and, and 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 so on, and then you know things like Cleaver jeans and so on for Elridge Cleaver, you know, and you were you were really kind of you know disappointed in our, in in you know in our, all all this development, this form of uh, recuperation, and 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 you and you'd notice that the uh, the way how everything just. Um, Fragmented and uh, and but there's no sophisticated kind of um, real recognition of, um, <coughs> of recuperation. To, um, um, but it had been proclaimed first of all that with the situation is that they didn't realise. Well, it took them some time to realise that they, uh, you know when the term used the term situationism that was the beginning of the recuperation and so on. And of course, it became stronger and stronger and stronger. And, you, and um, how, di how did you avoid it? And of course, in Britain, the big one was punk, you know, of the recuperated uh, um, uh, format, turning it into radical music, yeah. Because we were down on the whole lot at, in, uh, at its height of, of any artistic practice uh, 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 was out. You had to go beyond it all the time, as well as being informed of what led up to it, because we're all very clued in historically about uh, a whole gamut of modern, modern art. And you, you said you couldn't have the role of painter or sculpture or musician or architect and so on, and you'd think, fuck, you know, how are you going to survive and so on? And you couldn't become an academic. It was all of, uh, like that. And then people gradually, you know, kind of, um, well, Recreated those roles again. Yeah, that's what happened. I was uh, watching the video you did a couple of months back, one in the disguises, we talked mm. about the end of music mm. and that pamphlet. And you said afterwards maybe you thought you'd been too absolute in it. Sorry? You thought you maybe been too absolute uh, in uh, it. In terms of, uh, the, all, there was always a drift, yeah. Um, because um, although you could say that, that, that punk was geared, like Michel Prigent put up um, slogans, uh, you know, who was. De Boer's uh, mentor, um, Butler. Butler, as well, in, in Britain, <laughs> um, that um, punk equals pound notes, which was true. But at the same time, the people who were kind of attracted to, to punk, punk were transcending that kind of representation. And thus, there was a big expression of punk in the riots of yeah, 1981, was which was direct yeah. on the streets. You couldn't fault <clears throat> it. They broke through yeah. the representations of the Yes, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. That's the whole point, yeah. yeah. So, in a sense, recuperation breaks down as well. Once something real happens, 
and so on. Yeah, I think you described it as a leaky system. You know, it's a leaky you? system. Yeah. yeah, very much so. And 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 that's the whole point. And we'd met the punks, um, <coughs> although we were against um, Malcolm McLaren and what uh, um, um, uh, he'd done like that. The punks that we were meeting on building sites and things like that, you, know, you go on with them. Yeah, 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 it was you're kind of the best on me. Yeah, so. yeah. And uh, they were up for it. Yeah. And so on, yeah. Yeah, anti authority. Anti authority. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think some of the ideas did filter through. I mean, I, I, I worked in a car factory in the 70s, and uh, we basically produced a, a newspaper inside the factory, uh, which used, I think, sort of kind of certain elements that came from situationist ideas. I mean, one was faking the company newspaper, mm -hmm. right? We actually had a company newspaper which was called Ford News where they used to pump out their stuff and we made one which looked just like it except it was called Fraud News. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. remember that. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean it was very good. Yeah. I'll stand up. I'll stand up. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was terrific. Yeah, the other thing is we had yeah. a, I mean it wasn't our idea, we nicked it from some American outfit but we had this, the Ford symbol was also kind of changed so that it, it looked just like the fraud symbol, but it actually had the word fraud on across it. And that's still in use right up till, well, the, the Vistian dispute, not the Vistian dispute, the dispute they had, um, oh God, about a Three, few... four years ago. Yeah, I can't remember what it was, but it was, it was, a, it was another fraud thing. And I, I noticed Bob Hoskins was wearing a bloody hat with fraud on it. So, I mean, it, it sort of filtered through. Yeah, yeah, it filtered through. And, and, and uh, I mean that's very true because I mean a lot of the um, in the north of England, well in Newcastle, the way our the situation is went, went, went the right shipyards. down into the shipyards <laughs> um, in no time, and there was a lot of disruption. And the trade union leaders in in Newcastle were absolutely pissed off by it. Only to call them uh, situation, uh, no, uh, what situation? Uh, situation, situation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which was pretty good. Because, uh, <laughs> you know, and it's got to be stopped and uh, and so on. But it was like it was. Uh, it came from apprentices uh, uh, more than anything, yeah, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. And uh, I, I mean, it, it was terrific. And they did some leaflets as well. And the leaflets have been lost. Which I mean, you know, they'll be there somewhere. Uh, but um, I, I remember reading um, some of them; they were really, really good. And they come from the apprentices, and that was the drift down from the universities, um, if you like, or the art schools and things like that. And and and, and, and that's what um, at the time you you were thinking: this is it, it, it's going lower down the social scale to the point of production and the disruption of production in a in, in a terrific. Playful way. Uh, I mean, I yeah. think the ground had been uh, prepared in the northeast by somebody like Jack Connor. Oh, it had, yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, <coughs> you know, the, the right to get drunk strike. Yeah, uh, well, well, yeah. well, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah, well, he wrote that in about uh, the right to get in drunk in 1920. In 1920. I was just worried because there was another place that something turned up, and I thought that's got to be troublemakers like you, and I don't know where you, but it was 1992, Blackbird Leeds Estate. Do you remember also a well, ram raid in his, I think oh, it was Blackbird yeah. Lee's his yeah, gift yeah, to the world, yeah. pretty much, but it was ram raid in a, you know, and then everybody coming out watching the cars being, yeah. and all that, you know. And But one of the things was that all the journalists turned up there because there'd been a riot down there as well. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and and all the journalists were there and people, the local kiddies were selling a leaflet to them for 25 quid. I think it was 20 quid a leaflet <laughs> to the journalists. Yeah. And, I, and I've, I've got, found, I've got a copy of it, but I've read the text of it and it, is, it is like that exactly what you were talking about, but the nicest line of it, because obviously all these people at Blackbird Leeds, if you know anything, used to work in car factories. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So their slogan was, we used to make them, and now we nick them and race them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought, I immediately thought you used to. But yeah, 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 in the case, in Oxford was called, what, the, the city of screaming tyres, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, a gift yeah, to the yeah, world, yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, or, 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 and they've got that, yeah. Or, Oxford, not uh, not the dream inspired, spy, uh, <laughs> but the perspiring dreams. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean that was terrific, yeah, because uh, I um, I went into those uh, Blackbird uh, uh, Blackbird leads, yeah, and there was that community centre, yeah. and the big thing on it outside it said Art Attack. Do you remember that? I only yeah. know it for the last ten. Oh years. yeah, and, and and I thought, yeah, well that's getting the spirit of um, uh, of, of that town and gown. In Oxford, yeah. and it was a modern subversion that was beginning to happen. Yeah, and because when I first uh, saw that, I thought, oh, terrific! Yeah, yeah.
Yeah. Can I pick up on another sort of thread of your your ideas in terms of um, you met when you went out to America? You met Marie Butchin, and there's oh, yeah. um, so you're quite influenced by social ecology. And I know somewhere else you talk about um, being taken out by your uncles to um, into the countryside who were miners to. Um, to uh, get a love of the of, of the countryside in the northeast, it's very, and, very, uh, early, yeah. and, uh, yes. very yeah. early, very yeah. very early, and then, but that indeed. seems to sort of continue. Yes, so you're interested <laughs> in Bookchin, and Bookchin is almost kind of he's almost having his moment ten years after his death in some ways because a lot of interest in his influence oh, yeah. uh, in, uh, in yeah. ecology uh, in, yeah. in the Rahavan Revolution, for example. Yeah. Um, but you've also you've also well, you might have to explain dialectical butterflies to us, but some of your uh, other uh, uh, well, uh, uh, the thing about um, Murray, it, it's kind of like because I have a very good friendship with Murray, uh, but a lot of it uh, came through Black Mask, and a lot of it, because um, uh, he was friendly with uh, Ben Marais, uh, and, and it was about the kind of, uh, really, you see, that was the breadth of Murray, um, that um, he wasn't talking so much about his eco-ideas uh, uh, then, it was... Um, uh, the polarisation in American society and the influence of the Black Revolt. And uh, I remember him just uh, in, in New York, just excited to me. Hey, you know, up in the precinct, uh, up on the west side, uh, the black cops have just drawn the guns on the white cops and they're going to shoot them <laughs> and things like that. Said, this is terrific. And I thought it was as well. Um, that, you know, it, 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 it was getting into the, uh, the heart of things. And he didn't talk about his, he, 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 uh, first of all, his, um, um, his eco things. And that happened later because the eco movement took off, um, uh, um, in, in, in really began to take off uh, in the 70s, although, you know, I mean, it, it, basically, Murray was the first back in, in the 50s um, and its abandonment of Trotskyism. And don't forget, a silent Spring, um, I don't think would have been written without Murray, Murray's influence. And no one really mentions that. Mm. He was writing his Lewis Herbert before that. Yes, yes. Predates very that much, book. Yeah, uh, very, uh, yeah. Yeah, mm. uh, uh, very much so. But I'm, I mean, with Murray and his, his eco ideas, um, I didn't um, uh, see so much uh, of, of, of Murray um, at that point. I, I, it was his. Um, uh, his ex-wife, uh, who, who had uh, seen more, but I mean, F Phil Mailer, who was the Irish guy who was in King Mob, was uh, had got very close to, to, to Murray at that point because he got pissed off with Murray's because uh, uh, he, he things because he was he was concentrating on the fact of creating small kind of anarchist cafes and uh, anarchist eating um, things like that, and and he was saying. Well, this is where the eco revolution can begin, and Phil was freaking out with him because he was getting mad with Phil. I mean, he, he did some really good things, but this is before I went to Portugal and wrote the best book on the Portugal Re uh, Portuguese revolution of the mid 70s that was written, which I helped him on. Uh, but he was going there, Murray, Murray, the, the whole fucking place is plastic. This isn't what eco should be. It isn't what eco should be. And Murray was saying, you know, calm down, calm down. It, it's not like that. But, but in a way, I, I mean, Murray, um, um, he, he, development towards his end, where he really got pissed off um, with how um, um, eco and money were beginning to kind of come back, and really wrote a lot of savage things at that point of, about it. That it had to be social eco ecology, it had to have an eco movement that was with the perspective of moving beyond money and the capitalist mode of production. And, 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 and that's the most important thing about Murray. That's why you've got to keep uh, mentioning uh, uh, Yeah, Murray. I mean, the other thing, I mean, the, you know, uh, Murray's was a very American experience, you know, I mean, it was uh, the wilding of America. <coughs> Obviously meant something um, very different from this country. I mean, we were brought up, you know, I mean, uh, amid industrial dereliction. And we were kind of, from a very early age, kind of quite staggered by the amount of biodiversity that was there and that was pointed out to us by aunts and uncles. Yeah, you know, uh, so. uh, who, uh, but I mean, I think Murray was kind of, you know, part of kind of, the, you know, almost from the Aldo Leopold perspective, except he was an anarchist, mm. you know, mm -hmm. um, that, um, you know, he, he'd want uh, big uh, herbivores and predators brought back to uh, the Yellowstone National Park, like Aldo uh, Leopold. Mm -hmm. But he never ever kind of took up the issue of um, 
uh, Brownfield site and no, the marvellous no, riches of Brownfield did, site it no, because it wasn't a reality in America. Yeah, well, yeah. in the Midwest, but it was a, a, a small, a small bit. It was so vast, America. Well, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I wonder yeah. whether the important one of the themes that kind of links some of the situationism and the environmental stuff is this idea about alienation, which was really important to, to both of them, even alienation from the natural world, alienation from the means of production, alienation from our communities and yeah, each yeah, other. Yeah. I think that's really important because that kind of feeds through to, um, you know, I've been interested in, in groups like the, the Street Farmer, and I, and I think yeah, it's yeah, a kind yeah, of a critical yeah. idea that was really, I don't know, if we've got a kind of a a Swiss army knife of critical ideas. It feels yeah. like something that we're not really talking yeah, yeah, about now, but it's yeah. a really important yeah, thing. Oh, yeah, I, I from mean, that era, that links uh, a lot uh, of this uh, stuff uh, together. Uh, the example of Street mm. Farm is, is still one of the best eco uh, 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 things um, in, in comparison to, to, to all the greenwash that's going on now. It was very, very important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would you be able to say more? Because I, I did write down a quote. Alienation was bent to me merely signify unneighbourliness. And that was something when you, you were writing in the summer of a thousand July. Well, so yeah, I mean, they're talk, talking about so Notting Hill. I mean, the thing is mm -hmm. that, you know, there, were not kind of, there was no kind of ever discussion of kind of Marxist theory of value or anything like that, though, or kind of, uh, you know, potential sort of... Uh, chronic crisis of capitalism, which I think we're in now, you know, from which there's no exit. You know, alienation was, just, uh, was reduced to the fact we don't touch each other, we don't cuddle each yeah. other, and that sort of thing. And I thought this was kind of just avoiding, you know, a, a lot of very, very deep issues indeed. Uh, you know, which, you know, which, there were never a discussion, were there really? No, not you really, know, no. Just a, 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 a amongst a small number of people that we knew. You know. what's, what's the lessons for now? Now? What now? <laughs> <laughs> well, what was what? What can we, what, I mean, what can we take away, with, away from what you've been talking about? Well, I, yeah, I mean, uh, we're very much into kind of uh, urban, um, you know, uh, ecology, kind of uh, habitat creation and so on. I mean, you get something a hell of a lot of trouble over it, you know, and you feel very passionately about it, you know. Um, hoping in London that we might be able to in you know, we're working on Wormwood Scrubs, uh, which is an amazing area, in fact. Um, it has been wild, uh, partially. Uh, but um, there's lots of housing uh, struggles appearing around the perimeter of urban, well, right across London, in fact. And we, we want to kind of tr try and bring somehow or the, the two together, potentially, to create a kind of a, a ZAD. Um, you know, the, the French experience, the zones, uh, uh, defence yeah, zones, zones out of found, you know, yeah. so. Mm. Uh, because I, I do, th well, I do think the eco um, uh, struggles in France uh, are, are the best in the highly developed world, do the Zats. But again, that's because partially the situationist influence. Yeah. Not through the situationists who didn't first um, really have any eco. Uh, perspective. Pers no, I don't perspective. Think, yeah. no. And it came afterwards with uh, um, a Sick Planet with the ball, which is very, very good indeed. But remember, the breakaway at that point, which had happened, and the creation of um, the Encyclopedia de Nuisance, which was the real beginnings of um, autonomous eco uh, 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 critique in, um, in um, I would say, in Europe, yeah. because the German Greens. Oh, they were yeah. lost oh, yeah, in comparison no, yeah, to the Nuisance people. Yeah, yeah, a brief uh, uh, yeah. things on the barrages on the wall. Um, uh, yeah, but barrages on the... Uh, Ronnie Russell, and don't forget, <laughs> Ronnie Russell, um, I mean, uh, after 68, he did brilliant things in, in 1968 uh, uh, and, and, and wrote excellent things. But he went crazy in the early 70s, like a lot of people did, completely fucking mad, like I did. And um, But he, he went in a lunatic asylum, uh, came out and, and stole all the situationist money, about 32 grand, as much as that. He did. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> he did all gain <laughs> all. Uh, but, but no, he was being flashed. He was being absolutely flashed. He was getting it. A situationist hot shot. I've got all the money you can do. You want a drink and um, I can do this. And he cracked up completely. And then he went out into the back of beyond. Um, on the Larzac uh, 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 Plateau, joining with Confederation Paysanne. Um, and bit by bit, uh, which was the, the modern kind of 
eco-movement. There was Maoists in that as, 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 as well, ex-Maoists, uh, ex-Situs, um, uh, anarchists. Um, and it was pretty good. And the Nuisance people who, who, who had bro basically broken away from the ball. Um, the, uh, Semprun couldn't really get on with the ball. Miguel Lamoras couldn't, the Spanish uh, guy. Um, um, and, and they made the contact. Um, uh, with resell, and of course against GM Foods in the in the in in, in the in the in the late 90s, and they did some really brilliant things. Now all of that has affected the creation of the Zars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And whereas the the German Greens have become terrible, yeah. what happened in France has been terrific in 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 the Zars, and he, uh, and and you know like the Invisible Committees uh, and so on, the Tarnak now, they. They did write a really good thing on, on what's happened recently in Nantes um, and so on, like they're in the Nuit de Boue, uh, movement movement now. And um, um, some um, really good things against the Green Party and its political ma machinations and, official, and, and the official Green movement for this autonomous eco-movement, which of course has come out in in Nui de Boo, in, in certain in certain aspects, like digging up the plaster of the uh, La Republique, and they're taking up the um, yeah, yeah, the stone, uh, the stone plants. Yeah. 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 I just want to drag. I'm just going to drag you briefly to a bit of time back to the 1980s, right? Because I want to talk about like something you just mentioned, the Invisible Committee, also, and also we're talking about books like The Coming Insurrection, which have had this major impact. Yeah. But to me, like some of the Thousand Delights, had a massive impact on me politically. Because it was the first time it was almost like having a veil taken away. And, understanding things and, you, and I think a lot of people reacted to it because it actually related to their own experiences as well. Mm. Other stuff that was written about the riots in 1981 did not. Right? But what, what I'm interested in is don't you, one of the things that came, came out of Like a Summer I felt was is that there was a difference between the kind of politically orientated riot you know that you get in May Day in Kreuzberg all the way through the 80s and 90s and in Europe that kind of orientated around political ideology and mm. You know stuff like that, and, and the, the, in Britain, I'm not saying you said this, but there was an in, in, in Britain, ultra leftists treated Britain as being pure, mm -hmm. that we actually unmediated. had less unmediated, you know, trouble on the streets, and I would say that's true right up until 2011, right? The, 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 we are the least mediated. Yeah, yeah. We're, a, we're a nightmare yeah. for organisation, yeah. but we're. The, you know. Well, I, I mean, the interesting <laughs> thing yeah, is yeah. that the Oscar Gasseros, um, who yeah. we're friendly with in, in France, that came from the situation. Yeah, they used to pop down here when it was a riot. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, and they came to live in England, which, uh, uh, you know, tally with them and, and so on. And um, um, they came because of this unmediated riot, and they said, France is nothing in comparison to what. Um, <clears throat> Uh, it's, it's happening here, uh, uh, which it was, it was elemental, yeah, yeah, and you'd get this in Britain, elemental movements that seemed to come from nowhere, yeah, yeah, and they just sweep yeah, things yeah, away. Yeah, well, I mean, the French really did like the unofficial um, uh, movement, uh, workers' movement. <laughs> yes, they did as well. It, I mean, mm -hmm. it, wasn't, it wasn't mediated uh, to yeah. the same yeah. degree as no, that's you true. Know, yeah. uh, France and Italy. You but know. my problem is, is with a coming insurrection and all of that, it's almost as if that, that that fascination with the purity is now being turned into an ideological position. Mm. That's what I felt with the coming insurrection. This is a new ideology of insurrection. Well, and it was like, well, hang on a minute. It's yeah. like, you know, and, and all these people will tend to do is they claim things for themselves. Like, so I've heard it from Oakland to bloody, you know, to France. It's like, oh yeah, we're right in with the kids and all that. And it's like, no, you're fucking well, not. You're, you're well, sitting out in a commune in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> right, you know, and you're, you're writing books about fucking insurrection. Uh, uh, so yeah, what? I mean, the thing that I've got against kind of the invisible committees and things like that, it's kind of like postmodernism. I mean, it's interesting that they don't uh, so much talk about uh, uh, anarchists or the situation. It's, it's kind of Deleuze, Guattari, yeah. um, um, and, and Zizek even. And it's a story they've forgotten about that radical tradition uh, in France. And what's interesting, I mean, Jack. Um, recently, it just uh, uh, written to me because he was just pissed off with them in the Nuit de Bull movement. He said because they're a cross between Stalinists and, and, and adopting the, the, the style of, um, of, of street kids, that in the Nuit de Bull, they're going around and, and he said the thumping people, uh, it's because they've had some ideological differences with them in the past. He said this is a useless form of, 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 of violence. Is this people and learning tropes and learning ways of behaving that they want to appear to be these like, you know, unmediated street 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Like but and he said the school kids, the balance of the school kids <laughs> and the rioting and um, um, in, 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 in France has been really good. But he's, he's really down on the, on, on the town, I think. But I, as I said, the have the did, I think, uh, uh, do, do some good things in, the, in, um, in Nantes. In, in the eco movement, well, what what they've written as well, but I I wouldn't get on. No, I'm trying to get in there, Carlos. Sorry, yeah. I'm oh, sorry, but I was in Lisbon last week, um, partly for family reasons. I mean, I had to go to sort of something out. My mum and dad were Portuguese, and I got on the break line. I got this thing you know, that there's a meeting of the, the Invisible Committee. Right, so I thought I'd go along and have a look. And not, I must that, not that invisible. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Well, they claim not to, the guys. Yeah, they, they've got a website. Can I, um, the people who claim to speak, who were speaking, claimed to not be part of it. Mm. Right? The audience was basically out of trend. I mean, they were kind of you know, people who were there. Certainly weren't there on the demonstration the following week. That I, you know, the amount of people that were there at this meeting. But what was kind of interesting was that the guy was basically just telling us what was going on in France. And I hadn't actually picked up on it because there hadn't been that much on the news. I immediately went and sort of kind of looked on the, in on the internet. And sure enough, what he was saying seemed to bear up, which is that there seemed to be a kind of sort of, uh, finally, some kind of common interest, because they're fighting against the labor law, yeah? Um, common interest between the straight kind of trade unions, the CGT, and mm. the kind of black bloc kind of faction, mm. and they seem to be fighting on the same side, <coughs> which yeah. is kind of something I thought was quite interesting mm. and quite positive. Uh, yeah, well, that's, that, that's perceptive, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in the occupation of squares in, uh, uh, in, in Lisbon. Sorry? Well, uh, well, was there an actual occupation of this? No, no, there wasn't. Oh, but there was. There? In fact, this lot that were in this meeting right. certainly weren't active in any minute. They just went along to listen and eating mm -hmm. and smoking and all that. Oh, oh, right. um, but, I mean, the guys who spoke, it was a man and a woman, I mean, they were from France, and they, I just thought what they said was actually quite straightforward. It wasn't posing, it wasn't funny, it was just passing on information, which I thought was quite useful. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what happened in, in Lisbon was the, uh, this last week was the anniversary of the 25th of April, which you must be aware of because it's oh, yeah. you, you connection with Phil Mailer. Yeah. Um, and that was, I mean, having been to them before, I thought it was, there was a few interesting things, a lot more kind of um, migrant workers kind of, play, you know, sort of more or less protesting their illegality, mm. you know, and sort of being asking for the rights to be, you know, taken seriously. And there seemed to be a link up between what anarchists there were, uh, which were in small groups, a small group of AIT, for instance. There were a lot. Of, there were a group of gays. There were kind of, you know, a few pro-Palestinians, all mixed up together with the immigrants. But there certainly wasn't any kind of uh, anything to relate it to the what the guy was speaking about the week before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean. The uh, you know, they've got that uh, website, the what's it, Tarnak uh, News in English, yeah, uh, or Tarnanews.org, um, uh, with a lot of their kind of uh, things about the Nuit de Vous on it. It's interesting looking at it, yeah. Well, I, I, as, as I say, I, I just, um, there's this ideological oval, overlay, which I find. Um, uh, I can't, I can't really get along with it, yeah, mm. and, and so on. Um, uh, uh, yeah, simple as that, yeah. There's a, there's a Bristol Nuit de Boo on the 15th of May, actually, so it'll be interesting to see what it learns from the Occupy experience, which uh, kind of well, meteorotic rise the, the, and then well, just the the dissipated the very, very, very quickly. Nuit de Boo in uh, yeah. Liverpool on that day. Okay. Day. Yeah. And I think I'm the good one in Leeds. I mean, so what's it mean? Up all night? Or something? That's all right. Yeah. Are we going to call it that? A good translation. Yeah, I'm not good translation. Yeah, I'm not saying that. We're going to hit on the right translation. Up all night. Yeah. Up resisting all night. It's out of, you know, it's something like that. But I mean, it's. Um, I got um, uh, things from a um, friend yesterday from uh, uh, France, uh, and uh, I mean, it's um, 
Um, he, he thinks it's actually really expanding. We already do. Oh yeah, we are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What, yeah, it, yeah, I'm what does that mean? Oh. Staying up. Here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's sort of, yeah, yeah. Yes, I mean, I think kind of taboo. I mean, it sort of means that you have an outlook as well. I mean, it's not just sort of being on your feet through the night. Yeah, it's kind of like the perspective on the future. Yeah, yeah. Vision. I mean, this was this was yesterday. It, it said yesterday there's been quite a lot of people demonstrating on the streets everywhere in France, but not more than the previous demonstrations in Paris. There are two main reasons for it. Firstly, the schools and universities are on holiday; they go back on Monday and will demonstrate Tuesday. Secondly, the unions didn't call for a real full budget strike. So in some towns or particular sectors, where some union men are more radical than the hierarchy above them. They succeed in gathering thousands, but in other places it was more symbolic, just big balloons and banners to be seen on TV news. As I told you, the real strike, an ongoing strike, will probably start around the 15th of May, if they do what they've said, which is not for certain, because they have already backtracked and, and slowed down or postponed action for weeks. And then it said, um, in Paris there were around about uh, uh, 20,000, 30,000 people and among them around 1,000 or 2,000 more or less active who constantly fought the police until in the end the French cops did what they do in England, kettling the demonstration front, back and sides, even sometimes inserting the demo with plain clothes cops. And this of course is taken for what it is, a provocation. Some of the last named have been badly injured and the whole media, the news and political speeches of yesterday night were concentrated on this even commented to bombard the, uh, uh, President Hollande and his Home Secretary. This is towards announcing, of course, a step toward forward uh, um, on repression, and they have uh, arrested only yesterday more than 200 people. That mark now means a tally of around 2,000 people have been arrested during the last month of upheaval. Um, after the demonstration, part of it, numbering 1,000, joined the Place de la République, and some trade unions have spoken at the General Assembly, mostly to call for a related struggle between workers and young people. Some talk about the necessity of an ongoing general strike, but not a lot of people continue to remain in the Place de la Republic. After a few hours, most of them went back home, so the people who wanted to widen out the occupation were only a few hundred, and therefore not powerful enough to resist the police after midnight. The police has asked Nuit de Boo to leave the place, Cops arrived and violently dis dispersed the Place de la Republique. The cops were very angry because of what had happened during the afternoon when they were attacked their, plain their disguised plain clothes cops and their undercover maid. maid dozens were arrested. Um, then more and more political establishment guys, mostly right wing, but also some from the left, are now asking the government to definitively clear the Place de la Republique and the government, helped by some unions, it's, it's putting more and more pressure on the so-called responsible elements to keep order in the Place de la Republique, which is impossible as they haven't the means, and if they tried, they would be completely ignored. So the responsibles play with the words for the moment, but there will be a point when their manoeuvrings will become impossible and they will be obliged to take a, a clear position. This is to be followed up. <laughs> I think that's a good, yeah, otherwise we're going to be up all night, so yeah. we'll, we'll probably continue this, sure we'll continue this uh, conversation later in the day and then after. All right, yeah. Um, should we have, we can have a little...